Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and I have been waiting for one of these to come in. This is different, this is fun, because like you might be looking at it and going, dude, where's the door? Because that's the thing. This floor plan is crazy bonkers. It almost looks backwards standing here. It's the 14cc Wolf Pup. To give you an idea, I first ordered this thing in like July of last year. It's just now making landfall. And take a look at it. It is what I call a towable truck camper. It looks certainly like Wolf Pup on the outside, a little unconventional with the rear wall for sure. It still maintains that giant door side window, but look at this thing. That is the floor plan of a truck camper all day, every day. Front bed, side kitchen, door side dining, again with that awesome window, full bathroom, which is kind of cool on this thing. And it's just a little unconventional. Now, a lot of times a door off the back of the RV, I think could be problematic with a lot of campsites, but this thing is so small, I think it leaves you plenty of room on the campsite. You can just decide how far forward or back do you park it. I can see a little camper like this actually being parked near the front of the site, which leaves you almost a very private rear kind of patio space available if you wanted it. Actually, this camper is so small, I could see you parking it sideways on a campsite. And that's another thing. It is only 2,960 pounds. It is not an exceptional heavyweight. This falls very nicely into the realm of a lot of tow package uh, SUVs. And you know, I really wasn't sure like where to begin this one. So I figured starting by pointing at that rear door to give you that entry door frame of reference off the rear wall, and then just kind of giving you a lay of the land here. Uh, it, it felt a little more appropriate to me. And again, it, this is not going to be for everybody. Like, it's definitely a, a camper where you climb in the front bed. You'll see that in just a moment. Right now, I'm climbing all over the corner of it. But I think with the the short length, the towability, that just that giant window over here. Because here's the thing. Like, from sitting right here, look at the window coverage. You've got the uh, across-the-bed breeze window, household USB outlets all the way, all of our control panels and everything are up there, by the way, and that has the Cherokee Total Control System, just like a big, I don't know, Cherokee, Gray Wolf, Arctic Wolf, Alpha even. Uh, so you can Bluetooth stuff off your phone. Now, if you're sitting in bed or at at least the rear-facing dinette seat, you can add yourself a TV uh, over there on the wall if you're so inclined. I don't see this as a real tv focus model, though. I think this is something you're going to use every now and then. Um, you know, maybe on a rainy day you watch some TV. Full window off the rear door, kitchen breeze window, bedroom breeze window over here by the headboard. I mean, it's a little camper. And 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 certainly there's bigger things out there like the 16 FQ Wolf Pup, I think will probably feel larger even though it's extremely similar in size. But I could see this one working for some folks who uh just depending on your campsite, you like that extra visibility. Isn't this isn't this cool though? So if you walk in from the back door, this is what you're going to see right here. We've got all sealed countertops all over the place. And I mean, it's small enough. I, I think you could you could park it nose or tail facing however you want it on your campsite to put those big windows wherever you want. But again, you've got coverage pretty much wherever. And you see, they put all the overhead cabinet storage space in. They really possibly could. Now, it doesn't have a dedicated closet space. Like I said, this is a camp queen bed. And you are definitely climbing into it. One of the cool things Cherokee does here, though, is you see they have this nice little uh, headboard, which is the same thermal foil as everything else. If you remove that, you can actually squeeze a little bit longer, like true queen size bed in there. And that's an interesting thing. A lot of little campers, their beds aren't just 74 inches long like this. A lot of them are only 54 inches wide. Cherokee still uses that uh, uh, 60 inch wide mattress here. So if there are two of you sleeping side by side, or you and a dog, or you and a kid, or something like that, because I can see this camper working great for single parents, too. You're not, uh, you know, like, pressing against one another, making each other sweat all night, you know? Now, this has a full-size 13,500 BTU roof air, but something I'm really just going to give Cherokee some marks for, I don't know that I've talked about it much. They didn't do this in the past. They're using extremely bright light fixtures. They have more lumens coming out of them now than they used to, which is something they didn't used to do. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but right here under that overhead cabinet in the bed space, you've got a pair of little individual lights you can do whatever you want with. And again, household USB plugs all over the place wherever they can. Now that little plug up here, 
That is where you could put a uh, LCI, uh, like Wi-Fi type system is where you could uh, build that in there. Giving you a look at the kitchen, like pretty much all Cherokee products, you've got that larger uh, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. And that does mean that this RV has um, basically no pantry space. But some of my viewers pointed something out to me recently and maybe because that's just not how I camp. I never considered it. And as soon as they said, it, I went, oh yeah, you can always put a lot of your dry goods in the fridge like it is a pantry. I know it's it sounds weird, but it works. There's nothing that says you can't. And if I'm being ultra fair here, I always try to point out the good with the bad. Maybe that left-hand door, I would really like that if that was a drawer or something. I do feel like the RV suffers from a lack of drawers. That is something like one drawer would be really welcome here. But I, again, a little silverware tray organizer, I could work around that. I love how they do their kitchens. These wolf pups, everybody is uh, in their brother is copying what wolf pups been doing for a year or so now. You've got that extra large stainless sink with that, uh, you know, huge flush mount cover. And then just that two burner recessed stovetop. So even if the sink and the stove are in use, you still maintain a little bit of good kitchen space here. So the question is, uh, doesn't leave a lot of room. What about the bathroom? And what they did here, it, it, it's different, but it works. You know, like me, different, but it works. And I'm actually gonna start out here for the bathroom, just so that you can really, again, get the frame of reference and see what they did here. It's different, but it works. They actually split the bathroom. So this right here is usually where a truck camper would have a wet bath, where it's a shower with like a toilet in it. What they did here is the same thing they do in a lot of wolf pups. They put that little corner plastic sink in here uh, and, and it is just a shower. Although I actually, I refer to it a little bit as the Cherokee shub. Now you're seeing a little sawdust. You're seeing a little um, antifreeze on here. This RV is fresh off the apple cart, Mary. And uh, one of the things we do for you at no additional charges, we'll go through and clean everything. Um, oh yeah, one of the things I also like to do is stand in the shower to give you an idea of the headroom. You're gonna need your head up in that vent if you're you know, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, like me. If you're taller than that, your head's gonna be ducking for sure. And I had to be choosy on where I stood, but I could make it work. It's a small camper. I think the whole point of this RV is we're making it work, you know, like, uh, Mr. Gunn on Project Runway. Designers. The bathroom is, well, I guess the, the toilet, the water closet, whatever you want to call it, is different. I think, especially with this being a stick and tin trailer, I think that the walls here being totally blank are in a sense a gift because it lets you mount things like towel rods uh, to dry off however you want to. But again, being totally fair, thousand percent transparent, it's uh, it's no optical delusion. <laughs> it is tight against that wall right here. I'm, it, I, I don't know why they mounted the, the toilet so close to that left-hand wall, but as you can see there, you know, I don't, even at my size, I didn't really have a lot of elbow room there. Now, again, I think the idea here is you're making it work. I don't understand what's happening in the plumbing under the floor. It looks like that could have been made to work better, but maybe there's a reason under the skin that it is that way. I don't know. I don't know what's happening with the plumbing inside the walls and the floor. And I wouldn't normally like start at the back of a camper like this, but with the door being back here, it just kind of, I don't know, seems appropriate. So these do have a walkable roof, by the way. And you notice there's a black thing and an antenna sticking up back there. What is that, Sonny? Well, that is your LCI Insight Bluetooth camera. All the Cherokee products come with a backup camera already installed from the factory on them, which I like. Now, could we on almost any other RV here at Halid RV, other than of course this big, beautiful Legacy Montana, which already has a full observation suite from the factory, but any of these other things, could we add cameras to them? Sure. Factory doesn't warrant them. Now we stand behind our work at, at Halid RV. Uh, I, I almost said KFC. So, like, I spent six years flipping chicken for the colonel. I don't know how KFC just came into my mind. Oh, my Lord. Uh, regardless, okay. um, <laughs> starting back here, like all the Cherokees, you have that smexy tempered glass front, um, well, or I guess rear entry door there that does remember have that full viewing window. It's anti-slam, so it doesn't bang against the side of the trailer when you open it up. 
And again, how interesting is it that you just come back here? Oh, I'm looking at this. You know what would be neat? It is not available from the factory, but what would be neat is if there was one of those like armless awnings that could go off the rear wall of this thing. So you'd have a side patio awning and a rear entry on. Oh, that would be so cool. How cool would that be? I mean, it, it they don't offer it, but how cool would that be? <laughs> oh, idea time. What if instead of a rear awning, uh, you just got like one of those like 10 by 10 easy ups or something like that. People do that a lot of times on uh, what are sometimes called box drops, like little 12 SRK uh, Jayco or Rockwood camper. That would basically like you'd walk out of the camper and directly into your own private little screen room. How cool, how cool would that be? That would work, right? And you could just slide it inside the door and so <gasps> Oh, oh! Double idea time! It just occurred to me. You can just slide stuff in the rear door. There's all kinds of bunkhouse campers where the bunks fold up, there's a door in the back, you could use it for cargo. You could just slide stuff in here. You could probably very easily put like bicycles in here. Kayaks! You could put a short kayak in there. Hold on. How much length is there on the floor? I'm gonna measure this. 10 feet. Looks like there's 10 feet from inside the door. So like totally inside the door jam, totally clearing everything to the, the bottom of the bed base right there. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could actually kind of do a little cutaway on that bed base. Maybe you could make it a little flappy doggy door or something like that. I don't know. Or you could put maybe a longer kayak in there. I know 10 foot's not exactly the biggest thing, but my point, I just, I don't know why I didn't. That makes it so cool for like outdoorsy type people. I mean, obviously looking at me with my, you know, dad bod belly over here, you can tell I'm all about that life. Actually, I, I do enjoy kayaking a little bit. I just don't do it that much. Um, that, that totally changes this camper to me. I, my mind's blown. Some, you know, I, I wondered if somebody might think, yeah, but if, if somebody bumps into the back of you, that, that door is going to be a problem. You still have your bumper. You still have the spare tire. I actually kind of like how the steps kind of slot between them. I think that looks really cool. It just looks really cool, doesn't it? But to be fair, if somebody bumps into the back of your RV, I don't care what you got. It's not going to be a great day. You're going to be exchanging insurance information, probably uh, saying a couple four-letter words maybe. I don't know. It just depends on your temperament. And look at this thing. This is one of the other cool parts about it. Not just the weight, the small size. Only seven foot wide, super short length. You can tow this like crazy. Awesome, awesome door side window coverage once again. Outside TV hookups even. You got the little pet leash latch down there, by the way. And up front here, that, that bed that we looked at, giant chunk of storage down here, by the way. Now up front on this wall, uh, you see the little charge controller right there. That is for the optional juice pack uh, battery tending solar package on this. Now, the juice pack solar package is not going to let you park this in the middle of the desert and run the air conditioner or something like that. That is not what it does. It will help you extend your dry camp time. It will help keep the batteries uh, topped off while the RVs in storage. It is not the be all end all of solar. They are, it is a 50 watt package. They do offer a second 50 watt panel from the factory if you want to bump that up to 100 watts total. Now, uh, something I've not done a good job of explaining on Wolf Pups, like I've talked about it till the cows come home on J flights. Wolf Pups have actually been doing it longer and I feel like I've really failed Cherokee on this. So I want to, I want to make amends here and really point this out. The water heater. It's not just gas. It's not just auto ignition it's gas and electric auto ignition and fast recharge water heaters on the left by the way so that means that thing can get just shy of about 18 gallons per hour now this floor plan with the water intake the full outside utility shower which rocks on a little camper that is a nice thing to find and and the water heater means it doesn't have a full under the bed pass through because there's not a whole lot of other space that they would have to work with there's stuff in the other places along this wall another thing i want to point out too are the four corner stabilizer jacks because not everything in this class has those um the uh nose skin is extra thick and the darker color bands that we're seeing on the sidewalls those are also extra thick so that they are organically resistant to heat expansion and contraction which could stress the joints and cause a leak 
kind of like we talked about earlier, probably prompt you to say, well, some of them four letter words. Ooh, you can see my reflection in my little Buddha belly. I really got to hit the treadmill. I've been, I've been saying that I, I added those pandemic pounds for too long. There's no more excuse. It's time. So it's tiny. It's shiny. You can get even shinier in the Black Label package. Remember, Black Label's gonna add uh, that, that smexy fiberglass, a whole bunch of features. It's, it's an awesome package. It will add some weight, it will add some cost. It will actually reduce the total cargo capacity of the camper. So if you do pack heavy, you may wanna stay more here toward the standard series. As Soon as I get some footage for the Black Label series, I'll get that listed as well. If you wanna catch that when it comes out, if it hasn't already, cause I don't know when you're watching this, I guess. If you're watching this when it first comes out, Black Label footage I haven't recorded yet. I do have them on order. I do plan to capture that. If you wanna see it, if you haven't, hit the subscribe button so that you can catch it when it comes out. Let me know what you think of this wacky little critter. You love it, you hate it, something in between. Let me know either way. Appreciate you watching. Take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy Halo Camping, everyone. Bye.